all right? We're calling this North of Plymouth. The uh, name came from a, a friend of mine years ago, moved here from out of the country, and his wife always said, oh, we're gonna go up north, we're gonna go up north. And one day at work he said, Elaine, where is up north? Pretty much up north is north of anywhere you happen to currently be. So up north has lots of pine trees, so this we're calling North of Plymouth. So that's where the name came from. New pattern, the pattern is on the website ready to um, purchase either a print copy or download. And it is applique. And I'm gonna go through today some of the stitching on the machine that I used for the applique. I did the entire quilt with one stitch. I'm calling it lightning applique, I like it. It's a lot of fun. I'll show you how to do that when we get to the machine. But the other thing I want to tell you about this is with machine applique, people often struggle. Their projects get um, bumpy or puckered. Their stitching just doesn't look right. There are so many different things that are involved in doing a nice job of machine applique that we decided to do a class on it. We just posted the class last night. It's ready to go. The class is $19.99. It includes a free copy of this pattern. So it's a pretty good deal because the pattern is $7.99 on its own. The class is $19.99. You can find it at sewingbasket.biz and go to the shop page. And the categories down the side, you'll see classes. Click the classes page and you'll see all of our online classes. Right now, we don't have any um, in-house classes going on. We're hoping to maybe do a few late September, kind of seeing where the mask mandate goes. Um, but that class is online. You get to it from the website. When you click on it, it'll put it in your cart. You check out. There are a number of classes in there that are free as well. Also, you can just add those to your cart. And if you just pick the, pre one, excuse me, the free ones, you still need to go through the checkout process, although your bill will be zero. But that process gives us your email address and the contact information that we need to send you the email to give you the link to, reg uh, excuse me, to log into the class. If you've been in our Studio Y before, you can go to the Studio Y page on our website and just um, click go to Studio Y and log in from there. If you forgot your password, there's a little button that says forgot password. You'll automatically get an email that says reset your password and tell you what to do. So if you've been in before, you'll see all the free things in there. If you're new to Studio Y, you're gonna go in through the shopping page, click on the classes that you want. This one is called, surprisingly, Introduction to Machine Applique. It's a very complex title. But we're gonna go over in that class all the stabilization, different things to use, stitching, the entire process of how fusible applique works and how to make it better. So you'll see that. And uh, we're gonna go over to the sewing machine now and talk through some of the basics. All set, you can see my hands all right. There we go. Okay. okay, so one of the first things that you need to do with applique is stabilize your background fabric. This is a product called Totally Stable. It is a tearaway stabilizer. It is fusible. One side is waxy. That waxy side goes to the back of your fabric and you iron it and it will look like this. I've only ironed half of this one. This is my totally stable, waxy, shiny side up. Then I lay my background fabric over it and I iron it and it will stick. So I wanna iron it to the whole block. This is just showing you how it works. So that will stay on your project while you stitch. This stabilizer will support your stitches. And by that I mean they won't pucker and pull in. When you do a wider stitch, if you're stitching on only a single layer of cotton, those stitches can pucker. And that makes your applique look just not as nice as you'd like it to. So you always want to use some type of stabilizer. So again, this is totally stable. This is a tearaway. There are other brands. There's a product I like a lot called Shape Flex, which is actually a leave-in stabilizer. You fuse it on the back and it actually stays in your project. And also um, Dreamweave is a product by Floriani that stays in your project. Both of those get fused to the back 
and they stay right inside. This I'll have to tear off when I'm done, but that's what will support my stitches. Then we're using heat and bond light. Um, this is a fusible fabric, or excuse me, a fusible product. Again, it is one side is paper, the other side is bumpy. This is the glue side. When you buy heat and bond, it comes with instruction sheets inside or the instructions printed. You will be able to just follow those instructions. But what the process is, I'm going to take my pattern. So I have my tree pattern. I'm going to put my heat and bond down, glue side down, paper side up, and I'm going to grab a pen and I'm going to just trace and I'm not actually going to use this. I would trace it a little better than this, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to trace my tree onto my fusible. And I'm going to do that for each piece that I have. There are a variety of different kind of tips and tricks about this, but it's fairly basic. So once I'm traced a little better, it looks like that. And then I'm going to make my tree out of this fabric. So I put this fabric face down. I take my tree, glue side, against the back of my fabric. The back, not the front. <laughs> yeah, yes, the back. Uh, it's real easy to do this. That will do you no good. So the bumpy side goes to the back of, <coughs> excuse me, the back of your fabric. You're going to iron this and then cut out your pieces. On this tree, <coughs> excuse me, just grab a sip of water. <clears throat> Sorry. So on here, I'm going to fuse this down, and then I'm going to cut out around my tree. On this one, I wouldn't, um, I don't want the trunk to be green, so I'm going to just cut across here. I would cut this piece off and put it on brown fabric before I fuse my tree to the green fabric. Once I've done that, I'm going to cut out my tree and my heat and bond on the back. I've cut out my tree. I peel the paper off. <coughs> Got a good tickle in my throat here. Peel the paper off. You can see it's kind of shiny. I put my tree down and I iron it. So this tree is fused to my background fabric and my stabilizer is fused to the back of my block. So I'm ready to start stitching. Before I stitch, I always practice. Obviously, this isn't going to be a finished block. Um, I wouldn't have these scraps on here. But all these extra pieces that I have, all these weird little shapes, I save these. And then I can fuse these down onto scrap background fabric. And anytime I go to applique, before I start stitching, I always practice. And um, so by using these scraps, you can see this is actually this piece was the top of my tree. So this scrap mirrors the shape that I'm going to have to stitch over here. So they're great to practice on. So all those little scraps, and this I just cut some little curves because some of my trees are curved. So I've got this all fused down. It's the same amount of fabric, amount of stabilizer that's going to be on my real project. So I'm all set to practice to get a really nice look before I start stitching. When I go to stitch, I'm going to set this aside just a second. There's a couple, you can use any type of stitch you want. One of my favorite stitches, I'm calling it lightning applique. It is actually a stretch zigzag. A normal zigzag stitch goes side to side. A stretch zigzag actually goes back and forth. Can you see that pretty well? Yep. So it looks like a little lightning bolt, hence the name lightning applique. You can do it in any size or shape that you want. Um, the setting on my machine, it comes out with a width of 1.0 and a length of 2.5. Again, length is how much it moves forward, width is how wide it is. And so by changing length and width, there you go. Okay. okay, so as I started, the default size is 1.0 by 2.5. I wrote it right on the fabric because I'm going to save this piece later when I go to do my lightning applique again. I can decide what size I want and I know what my settings are so I don't have to figure that out each time. 
So this small one is 1.0, 2.5. This midsection, I increased the length to 1.5 and the width to 3.0. And then the bottom down here is length of 2.0, coming forward more, and width of 3.5. And then over on this side, I changed my length setting as well as my width. This is 2.0 long, 2.5 wide. This one in this section is 2.0 by 2.0 and 2.5 by 2.0. So I was just playing with different lengths and widths to see what I liked. And as I did that, I decided that my favorite for this project is 2.0 by 2.0, this kind of mid-length and width. It's wide enough that it's going to cover my raw edges, not too wide that they might fray out around it, um, and a nice length to just look like I've got an outline on my edge without looking as tight as a satin stitch. So on the Brother machines, this is stitch number six. If you don't have a Brother or you have a different model possibly, look in the book. It's called a stretch zigzag. Its purpose actually is a stitch, is if I had stitched this on a knit and I pull the knit, that stitch will actually open. Whereas if I do a regular, like a satin stitch, and I stretch it, that will cause the stitches to pop. So this allows the stitch to open and close. Um, but it looks like a lightning bolt, and it's super fast. It corners easy, stitches fast. It's very forgiving for an applique stitch. And when I did the North of Plymouth quilt over here, every tree that I did, I used that lightning applique stitch. And so I'm going to go to 2.0 here on my machine and 2.0. And I obviously um, wouldn't necessarily, oop, I got my glasses caught on my microphone. Hang on one second. There we go. Um, I obviously wouldn't usually be stitching with red thread in a green tree. I might if I wanted it to look real Christmassy. But here I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I have my machine um, set, as I said, 2.0, 2.0. I'm going to talk about feet for just a minute before I start. This is, you see these okay here, Cheryl, if I line them up? There we go. Okay, so this is my end foot. It is open toe, and there's a little split right in the middle. So I can line that up along the edge of my fabric. Might be able to see that pretty easily. That's one option. My J foot has a solid piece of fabric in, or excuse me, plastic in here. Um, I'd normally use that if I have an edge that might come up and get caught. So this one, it's not quite as easy to see through. So I usually use that end foot instead. But actually my favorite is one that doesn't come with the machines. It's an open toe embroidery foot. So it's completely open. There's a notch here to give me a mid mark. And there's two little red marks on the other side. So it gives me some options if I'm trying to line up along a certain place with a, a different type of decorative stitch. And this one also allows the camera to see a little better. So I'm going to use that one. Okay. This machine has a pivot function, which I have turned on. What pivot means is when I start, I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to plant my needle. and. Um, Every time I stop sewing, it's going to plant the needle and raise the, raise the pressure foot. So I'm going to stitch along, okay, and I'm going to move over a little bit. That started the, the center of my zigzag, my lightning stitch, is not at the center of the foot. It's actually over a little bit. So I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric to that edge at the right hand side. And that is going to, this is why you always test. So now I'm on my fabric and I want to see, and now I'm too far that way. So I'm going to cut. And this is what you do when you start, is practice, practice, practice. Okay? And I want to be right about there. And so I'm actually midway between that mark but where I can see it. And I can go nice and fast. When I get to the point that I want to pivot, 
excuse me, whatever side I want to turn to, my needle should be on the opposite side. So right now my needle is down on the left hand side and that's the way I want to turn. So I want to do one more stitch. So my needle is now on the right hand side of my project and I'm going to make a left turn. And I'm going to go just a little bit and then I'm, because I've got an odd angle here. Okay. And now I want to turn to the right, so I want my needle on the left. I come around this way. I'm going to do just one stitch to move it forward. And there I go. See how every time I stop, my foot goes up? That allows me to pivot my project a little bit because although this looks like a straight line, it actually has a little curve to it. So along I go. Okay, and I'm going to turn. I want to turn left. So I want my needle on the right. And off I go. And I'm going to show you what a bad job I did there. When I'm done, I can use my lock button. If I hold it down, it'll do three lock stitches. And this is a what to do and what not to do. Can you see that all right? Kind of there? Yep. Is that good? So here, my stitch is off and on my tree fabric. So that raw edge is completely covered. Here, you can see I was in too far, which I did. I like to pretend on purpose. It's really easy to do. Um, get off by a little bit, but that's going to all fray. And if I want that look, that's fine. Usually I don't. It's hard to trim once you've got it cut. You have to be careful not to cut your threads. But you can trim it off, but your best bet is to practice on a few pieces so you don't end up with an edge that looks like this. You're going to practice around all different things. You want to practice around curves. And you'll get used to what works for you. You can see I'm kind of half on and half off. Pivot a little bit. This stitch is also forgiving enough. I'm actually turning as I'm going, so I don't even have to pivot with this stitch. If I do it slowly and carefully, I can actually slide with very little um, having to stop and pivot. I'm actually just sewing around the curve. And if I do pivot, I want to pivot when my needle is outside, not on my tree, but on the outside. Do a little bit of a pivot. If I pivot when the needle's on the inside, it'll open up and there'll be a gap in my stitching. So if you're pivoting, you want to pay attention to the angle that you're doing it in. Here I'm at a corner. I want to turn to my right. So my needle was on my left, so I don't have to change anything. Here I'm at a corner, and I'm going to turn to my right, so I need my needle on the left. And away I go. Okay, and I'm going to just stop and cut here. So you can see where I went around those curves. There's only a tiny, there's actually it isn't, it's all caught. I don't have anywhere along there that I've got these green fuzzes sticking out. And that was by just actually kept sewing going around the curve. I didn't have to, like an old-fashioned blanket stitch, do two stitches, stop, pivot, turn, two stitches, top, pivot, turn. So it's much quicker to do this type of a stitch, hence the name lightning applique. Also, if my thread matched my tree, you would hardly see that at all. It would just be a really nice edge along there. So play with your stretch stitch. It's fun to do applique. Sometimes I want to play with all my decorative stitches. 
I'm going to just walk over here for one sec. Um, sometimes I like to play with all decorative stitches and I'll go around the trees and all different things. But on this, I wanted to get the sample done quickly. So every tree is just stitched with that lightning uh, zigzag, stretch zigzag, all the way around them. I could come back if I wanted to. This I wanted to look like a North Woods quilt, so I didn't decorate my trees. But if I wanted to do this for Christmas, I could use all my decorative stitches and put tinsel on the trees. I could use jewels and um, the rhinestones and decorate the trees. I could use buttons. So it would make a really fun Christmas project as well. But this just gives you a nice up north cottage feel. So again, the intro to applique class with much, much more detail than I went in, uh, into today is online and ready to go. The pattern is also up. The sample will be in the shop if you want to come in and look at things. And we used Totally Stable Tearaway, which I'm going to just grab this because everybody always wants to say, how does it come off? It just tears off. I can tear it away. And you can see that. And then if I use a pin, oops, got an extra thread on there, I can score that a little bit and that will get me that inside piece and that'll tear right out of the middle as well. So I've got to tear all of that off out of the back of my quilt and that'll make my quilt nice and soft. If I used Shape Flex or the Dream Weave, that stays in so I get to skip that tear away part. The difference is tear away is a lot less expensive than leave in, but it's one of our, we always talk about fast or frugal, fast always costs a little more money. The other ones are a little more expensive. This is a little less expensive, but it takes a little bit more time. So that is what we have for today. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, a couple of you have caught our live sales. We are going to be doing one. We've kind of decided to set a little bit of a plan. We're going to do one sale a month. It's always going to be on the second Wednesday. So the next one will be September 9th, 6.30 p.m., and we will be doing them all on the Sewing Basket page. Some of you were watching from the 2020 Quilt Group page, some from the Embroidery page, some from the Quilting Group. We're going to do everything at the Sewing Basket, our main page. What happened last time is a couple friends were on and they were in different groups and they couldn't see each other or talk to each other or tease each other. So if we're all in one place, then everybody can see the comments. You can see if your friends are on and uh, it just makes it a little easier to manage for everybody. So we'll be doing that Wednesday the 9th, second Wednesday each month at 6.30. Thanks for playing with us today. Hope you learned something and have a great day. Bye-bye.